George Clooney's All-Star Science Fiction Drama Fantasy is officially in theaters and on Netflix. But is it any good? In today's movie review for The Midnight Sky, we'll find out coming up. Hey everybody, Dragon Movie Guy here with another movie review. And today's review is for the George Clooney, Felicity Jones, David Yellowo sci-fi flick, The Midnight Sky, also starring Kyle Chandler, Tiffany Boone, Sophie Rundle, and Star Trek Discovery's Ethan Peck. If we're just meeting, I am Dragon Movie Guy, and if you like what I'm doing here, please be sure to hit the like button until it turns blue, and be sure to hit the subscribe button so you can find out the very second I post any videos to this channel. The Midnight Sky is rated PG-13. It is an hour and 58 minutes long, and it's based off the Mark L. Smith novel, Good Morning Midnight. The Midnight Sky stars George Clooney as Dr. Augustine Lofthouse, a world-famous scientist who discovers a planet-sized moon of Jupiter capable of supporting life. Set 29 years in the future, Lofthouse is leading a scientific expedition north of the Arctic Circle in a last-ditch attempt to save the Earth. However, by the time the film actually starts, the threat, simply known as the event, has already happened and everyone at the research facility is already going home to die, leaving Clooney's loft house alone at the research facility waiting for the end to come. Meanwhile, Selma's David Oyelowo captains the spaceship Ether tasked with checking out the viability of K-23. By the time the film starts, the Ether has already completed its mission and is on its way back to Earth. So we've got the end of life on Earth stakes, we've got a spaceship flying off to Jupiter, we've got a hundred billion dollar budget on this film. How is this film? So let's start with the good. This is the seventh feature film directed by George Clooney. The Midnight Sky features amazing cinematography and CGI worthy of Clooney's other space drama, Gravity. Also in the good category is a child actress making her feature film debut. Her name is Kaylin Springall and she's playing Iris and she plays opposite George Clooney for his half of the film. She does an amazing job without really even speaking that much. We've talked about the good, however, we need to talk about the bad. This is a film that doesn't know quite what it wants to be. Is it a sci-fi film? Is it a drama? Is it a thriller? Is it an action film? At times, it's a little bit of all of the above, but it doesn't really serve any one storyline, so therefore, it's really none of the above. The Midnight Sky feels like the screenwriters strung together a bunch of random scenes from a pitch meeting that had little through line with the main plot. Also, all of the global world ending stakes happen before the movie starts, making everything that happens in this film a complete moot point. There's like zero reason for this movie to happen. Everything's already done, the die's already been cast, Everyone is literally going home and just waiting to die. This film does a really good job showing the isolation and despair that Augustine feels having failed upon his mission to try and save life on Earth. So why are we watching him walk across the Arctic Circle to try and contact the ether to tell them something? There's no reason for this. There's literally no reason for him to be walking across the Arctic, why? Why? Why, are, why is this film even happening? In some ways, this film sort of feels like The Martian, but in reverse. And in some ways, this film sort of feels like Interstellar, but neither in a good way. It's just sort of a bunch of random scenes that have no through line through this picture. There are character building scenes, there are action scenes in this film, and there are actual stakes, but they don't lead to anything. They just sort of happen and then then they're done they don't really lead to further the story they don't really lead to further character development ultimately this is a film that feels like it wanted to get one last movie out of the gravity graphics package and that's about it despite the good cinematography despite the good special effects and despite the amazing cast this film is flat to me. I would say skip it. This film is a two stars out of five. So that's what I think, but let's continue the conversation in the comments section down below. So question of the day, what did you guys think of The Midnight Sky? Did you guys like seeing a film where the stakes had already been determined and we're taking a look at what happens after that happens? Also, 
What did you guys think of the little girl playing Iris, playing opposite George Clooney? Did you like her in this film playing opposite him? And do you think she held her own? Also, did you guys watch this in theaters? The special effects looked really good. I happened to watch this on Netflix on my laptop. I thought they translated pretty well, but I wanna know what you guys thought if you saw this in theaters versus watching it at home on Netflix. What did you guys think of the special effects in this film and was it worth going all the way to movie theaters to watch this film? Let me know in the comments section down below. And if you liked this review, please be sure to hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Also, please be sure to hit the subscribe button so you find out the very second I post any videos to this channel. If you like this review, please be sure to click right over here. That is the review that I did for Wonder Woman 1984. Please be sure to check out that review also. If you like this review, you might like that one as well. I've been Dragon Movie Guy, and I will see you next time. See ya.